And so let's pray. Miraculous God, we know this story so well. All the characters are familiar and all the words are known by heart. All the songs have been sung so many times. And we love this story and it's comforting, comfortable familiarity. And we praise you for the miracles which to us have become familiar. And at the centre of this story is the eternal God stepping into human history. The all-powerful one choosing to live in fragile flesh. The creator becoming a creature. We praise you for the miracle of God becoming human. And at the centre of this story is a God who reveals God's self to women and men. A God who works miracles through ordinary people who say yes to God. A God who enters every willing soul to birth new life. And we praise you for the miracle of your life within us. And so, miraculous God, may we see you, know you, and be united with you again this Christmas time. May our lives be changed by your miraculous love, and may we become part of your miraculous salvation, now and always. Amen. honestly say that this has been a difficult service to prepare. When I volunteered to lead worship online for Christmas Day, I envisaged preparing an upbeat celebration. Light was coming into a dark world, a new baby was being born, new life, new hope for the future. And although all these things still stand, the overwhelming issue for so many of us this Christmas seems to have very little to do with celebration, light and life. Instead, our celebrations feel like they've been curtailed, our Christmas lights feel a bit tarnished and the future seems quite uncertain. Christmas, of course, has traditionally been a time when we've gathered and celebrated together, both at church and in our homes with our families. And neither of these have been possible this year. And that has been really, really hard. Now, you'll appreciate that these services are prepared in advance. And at the time of putting this together, the new restrictions for meeting families over Christmas were announced. And so now, Dina can no longer bring Lola to stay for a few days and have her extended Christmas sleepover. The activities that we planned have had to be cut right back. And my parents won't be coming to stay a couple of nights, although they are hoping to make a 70 mile round trip just to see us for a few hours on Christmas Day. But of course, this doesn't just affect the Christmas holiday period. For the past nine months, most of us have struggled in one way or another with enforced isolation. We have missed holding new babies. We have missed embracing growing grandchildren, celebrating milestones and enjoying fellowship with friends. Some of us will be grieving people who have been lost to us during the epidemic, leaving us lonely, bereft with very little taste for gifts or glad tidings today. Those of us with health issues have had to live with some ongoing pain and anxiety and uncertainty about what's going to happen. And our separation from one another over the past few months, this hasn't been good for our mental health. It's turned us in on ourselves at times, loneliness paradoxically dulling our appetite for the company of others. Checking my Facebook page this morning, I was greeted with a post from Lynn Corley, who many of you will remember was a member at St Andrews until she and Ruth moved to Cleveleys a few years ago. Now, Lynn's oldest son, Tony, used to worship with us occasionally, and you may remember how Tony, who has autistic spectrum disorder, used to leap to his feet with enthusiasm as soon as a hymn was announced, shouting, yeah! Well, Tony still lives in Bolton, and as you understand, he's in supported accommodation. But because of COVID, 
Lynn has only been able to see him a couple of times over the past nine months. As I put this service together, she still doesn't know whether their planned Boxing Day visit will be allowed to go ahead. And like so many of us who are separated from their loved ones by the current restrictions, this is heartbreaking for her. And so she posted something from the heart, which she's given me permission to share with you this morning. First of all, a quote from Sappho. What cannot be said will still be wept. As a person of faith, Christmas is the celebration that Emmanuel is truly present with us. Emmanuel means God is with us. And if we ever needed to know that, it's now. That he is with us in our anger, with us in our pain, with us in our depression and anxiety, with us in the hurt and loneliness, with us in our shouting and swearing at the TV, with us in loss and bereavement, with us regardless of whether we feel it or not, with us in all this mess with us in our fight for justice, with us with the hungry, the homeless, the sick, the ignored, the persecuted and the weary. Christmas is not cancelled, it's only just a beginning. Thank you Lynn, we miss you. I was very struck by the choir's performance of our next carol. If you look at the notes for the video on YouTube, you'll see that the choir recorded this carol as part of their Good Friday worship. Christ born in poverty, Christ with us in our pain and in our dying, Christ our hope for the future, Emmanuel, God with us, born in the night, Mary's child.